So, first things first. Um, Ralph shows up earlier than everybody else. Uh, he did successfully make it to Minnesota. He did successfully find a couch to crash on, and he either rented or borrowed a car and went to Spicer, Minnesota, to be the first person bright and early in front of the Candy Ohio High court, um, Courthouse, where he streamed for approximately 30 minutes and then suddenly went inside an hour early. Um, this is the first encounter he had with a potential hostile target, and I warn you, uh, Ethan Ralph's entire stream is just nothing but annoying fucking songs. Yeah, that's fine. Take shots to me, because I'm taking shots to all of you. This guy right here is a Kiwi Farmer. You can tell. He got his phone out already. What's up, brother? <laughs> Mission accomplished, uh, Ralph. Ralph apparently didn't realize that this courthouse is just, like, right in front of the, like, it's next to the street in, like, downtown Spicer. So there's, like, people out walking dogs and doing shit. And this guy's just listening to music on a skateboard. And he just, like, assumes that, because he has, like, main character syndrome and he has a fucking holes in his brain. He just thinks that that's, like, a guy recording him instead of just being, like, a guy. Um... So he yells at this guy, which prompts the funniest fucking meme. The, the funniest thing that came out of it was this. Minnesota Americans have been waddling around here for about two hours now, and they haven't been very kind to me in Candy O'Hoc County. I'll be putting everyone on the net as keeper farmers from now on. If you see them flinch around me in this town... I'll put your fucking judge on the net as a Kiwi farmer if I get snubbed one more time out this courthouse. You watch and see, bitches. I'm going to put this dog on the net as a Kiwi farmer, too. You fucking Kiwi farmer. You fucking Kiwi farmer. <laughs> Ralph wishes he could be this fucking cool. <laughs> Um, so one of my main concerns was that people would try to like fuck with Ralph and, and like, I don't know, just like cause a scene. So I asked people not to do that. And then of course, um, as soon as Ralph, like Ralph is like 30 minutes in and one of the first people he sees just walks right up to him. This fucking guy just like approaches him immediately. And I'm thinking like, okay, well, I don't know. Let's see how this goes. Probably someone from the forum. Hopefully they're not fucking embarrassing. Uh, this is a uh, volume-adjusted, music-removed version of the clip on the front page right now. There's a song like this. Oh, hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? Hey, aren't you Ralph, dude? I'm I not was, Ralph. I was just watching Steel Toe, man, on the way dropping my son off. You should go box that, dude, man. My name's not Ethan Ralph, no. Is your name Ralph? No, my name is not Ethan Ralph. He's just so fucking smart, bros. He's so smart. He's definitely not the dumbest faggot that's ever walked the fucking earth. Oh, it's not? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were eating out. Hey, Pat, man, this man is big, bro. You don't is that right? Like that? I don't smell like those, though. Holy smokes, bro. Is that what you think? Yeah, you should go box, dude. I should go box, Aaron? Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but thank oh, you. Oh, Steel Toe Show? No, nah, I don't know who that is. Oh, man. Thank you, man. Oh, yeah, thank you, man. This guy presses him and he thanks him for it. Uh, he also de thrice denies the name that his father gave him. If you don't remember, uh, Ralph believes that I've changed my name. And so he says, you changed the... Oh, and, and Jim changed his name. You changed the name your daddy gave you. You changed the name your daddy gave you. And then, of course, this guy walks up to him and is like, is your name Ralph? No, my name is not Ethan Ralph, stalker child. <laughs> Just immediately bitches out, like, as hard as fucking possible. And the really funny thing is, after this bit, he goes, oh, oh no, my phone, my phone is hot. It's like holding a brick of lava in my hands. It's so overheated. Oh, my God. I Listen here. Listen. I understand my, my phone is about to boil into, into molten metal. I got to go cut cut this stream off and I got to go inside the coat house bright and early. So immediately after this, he makes up some excuse that his phone's about to spontaneously combust. I guess it's a Samsung. And then he heads inside the courthouse an hour early, an hour fucking early. Um, also I was very relieved because he says, oh, you watch Aaron. This is literally just a listener of the still, if you don't remember, or if you don't know, uh, Aaron M. Holt, who is the ex-husband of the woman that Riketa has uh, trapped into a uh, polygamous relationship. 
Um, he was a local broadcaster on FM radio in the area, like in central Minnesota. And uh, he got in trouble for like having like some really weird feud with like a woman who was like a rival broadcaster. And he like went like, way over the top at her, got fired, and he got to keep the rights to his show. So now he just does it online. So this guy is like a legit central Minnesotan fan of, of Aaron M. Holt. Uh, who knows of Ethan Ralph only because apparently he's too pussy to box him after saying that he would box him. So uh, uh, that was pretty funny to me that he just got pressed by like a genuine Steel Toe Morning Show fan <laughs> who's probably just listened to to Aaron Imholt on the radio for like the last five years or whatever. Um, very interesting. Um, so that's actually the funniest stuff from the, the omnibus out hearing. He went inside and... Um, Oh, by the way, the little thing that he said about him smelling like alcohol, in my morning post, I say, by the way, just so you know, you're going to a courthouse. Ralph says he's going to go. Ralph stinks. You may end up in a bleacher next to him for two hours at this courthouse hearing, um, sitting next to a man who doesn't wear underwear and who smells like shit. So um, this guy says he smells like booze. And he's like, no, I don't smell like booze. But... Multiple people who were there and took notes said that um, Ralph stank really bad, like uh, he was wearing a bunch of aftershave. So he saw that I had pointed out that he stinks like ass and compensated for that by wearing aftershave, which if you don't know, is alcoholic. You're supposed to put it on after you shave because the alcohol will um, kill germs that are in uh, microdermabrasions on your skin. Um so it's alcoholic. So chances are this guy, he's smelling all the alcohol <laughs> that he put on his skin um, to to cover up his body odor. And then that's what he smelled like in the courthouse, too. So um, the other, the only thing that he did inside the court, apparently he sat front row um, next to Riketa and Kayla on the bench. But before the court was open, he said that he like paced up and down the hallway, like staring at people. And that people were avoiding eye contact with him. He was doing like, a, I'm, I was up and down that hole and make sure that my presence was known and that the Ricada side was felt. People was avoiding eye contact with me. But apparently everybody was avoiding eye contact with him because he was just marching up and down the hallway staring at people. And people were like politely trying to avert their fucking gaze at this pig monster policing the hallway like some kind of fucking mall cop. Um, then, so then the hearing happened and I'll, and I'll explain what happened in that. Um, and, uh, apparently Ralph hugged Kayla after that. The only thing notable is that, um, Riketa was on his behavior, but apparently Kayla was with her family and she looked like shit. Everyone, er, there are multiple people who said that she seemed like noticeably unhappy, at, uh, with uneasiness and just like nervous, um, to be in court, even though she, it wasn't her omnibus here. So, the actual contents of the omnibus um, was that it was continued. There will be another omnibus because Riketa raised issues in his um, pretrial motions that could not be resolved at that omnibus. So, there will be what's called a evidentiary hearing or um, colloquially known as a Franks hearing. And a Franks hearing is when the... The chat's completely dead. Let me investigate this. No oh, wait. Okay, hold up. I got you. Um, the the Frank's hearing is when you go in and you claim that the warrant was obtained under false statements. So if a police officer outright lies in their statements to obtain a um a search warrant, the results of the search warrant must be thrown out. And this comes from a Supreme Court case where Franks was the defendant. So it's called a Franks hearing. Uh, and what Riketa hopes to accomplish, from what I understand, is to convince the court that Officer Pomplin, the guy that petitioned for the search warrant, was a uh, sheriff named Sheriff Quinn Pomplin, who Robert Barnes has said uh, holds a grudge against Riketa and lied in his affidavit um, to the court to get a search warrant. And what they claim is that um, this archive that was used by the officer is, ob quote, obviously digitally altered. And this goes back to this part right here 
where Rakita comes back from. It's very ironic, by the way, that his pause music is this. The stairs, hoping the stream doesn't suddenly die. While we are waiting, we'll be laughing at you. The drinking along is what most of us do. Oh, this is a different song. I thought that this was, it's the same guy. It's the My Room Records guy, but I thought this was the whiskey drinking lawyer one about how much he loves his family. Could be. Let me check. Both the front and the back. Then you'll grab a quick bite, kiss your lady goodnight. And remember to thank her for all of the snacks. So it's the song about how much he loves his family and shit. Then he comes back and he has cocaine on his nose. And uh, you can see it very clearly when he turns his head. Made shirts. Yeah, when you can see, when his when he tilts his uh, head down a little bit and his nose, his beak, um, sits on top of the dark mustache. You can see the the cocaine extremely obviously. And as I've said before, if you go back to previous parts of the video where he's in that same pose, you can um, not see it. So it's not just like a trick; it's like a very obvious thing. Um, so, Rakeda says that it's very obviously digitally altered, and a big part of what he's basing this on, basically, what, what the Franks hearing has to accomplish <clears throat> is it has to make the court believe that the search warrant originally used to obtain evidence would not have been obtained if the police did not mis uh, misrepresent things in a material enough fashion to justify the search warrant. So, if a, <clears throat> if a cop lies and says, I heard gunshots, and there are, I investigated, and I found, um, I found a weapons case of, like, illegal weapons, but then they found out that the, the cop just lied. He just went to raid your house because he thought you might have guns. He lied about the gunshots. Then the, everything that he found as a result of that search warrant is or is is thrown out. Yeah. You know, so it's basically like you win your case <laughs> automatically because all the evidence is gone. It's a very a very big reward. And he basically has to say that when the cop said that now don't don't get it twisted okay don't get it twisted he is not trying to convince the court at this stage that this video archive which is by fucking cog of all people is digitally altered that's a trial thing if he shows um if the, this was used as evidence against him in trial he could then say actually because of the pixels you know that this is altered so you so don't trust this that's completely different. The question is, did the cop lie about this video to the judge to get the warrant? Did he lie about what the video was, where it was, or what it showed? We can see the cocaine, the white spot on his uh, nose, especially when it's contrasted with his mustache. So this is what he said in regards to the video. Um... On May 22nd, M. Holt did a video blog where he talked about Nicholas and insinuated controlled substance use and also re referenced a video blog that Nicholas had put online the day before uh, that had been since taken off the lowercase i internet. M. Holt indicates in his blog that Nicholas needed help and needs to get help for his kids because of the substance abuse. M. Holt points out a time in the video where Nicholas has white powdery substance on his nose. On May 22nd, your affiant, who is Officer Pomplin, was able to review the video that was taken off of Nicholas's YouTube and Rumble social media sites. The video on um, the video is from the day before, May 21st, and is of Nicholas in a in his basement basement studio talking about a court appeals ruling he lost. He appears in the video to be drinking alcoholic beverages and eventually appears under the influence of a substance or substances. The entire video blog is four hours and four minutes long. Approximately two hours, 46 minutes into the video, Nicholas leaves to go to the restroom. When he returns at 2.50.40, he uh, appears to be making an excited look and has a white powdery substance on his nose. Your affiant believes this behavior is indicative of CNS stimulants. Your affiant believes based on his training experience 
as well as the behavior of Nicholas that the ingested that he ingested this white powdery substance through his nasal cavity while off of camera. A Minnesota attorney that I asked about this said that this is actually an extremely good police report. Police are usually very cl- please. You have to remember the average cop in this country is a high school graduate, probably 90 to 100 IQ. If you're fucking lucky, can barely use words to express ideas. They're not, they're not the smartest. They're not the best and brightest. They're not the finest. Okay. So if you get a police report that looks like this, that has very careful word choice, um, you're up against somebody who's above average when it comes to law enforcement in particular. Um, what people believed is that he's trying to say your affiant was able to review the video that was taking off of Nicholas's YouTube and rumble social media platforms. They're trying to, he is trying to interpret Nick is to say that the words taken off means I took the video from those channels and therefore he's lying. He lied to the judge that he had a true and honest original copy taken off of YouTube and rumble. Um, and if that, if that testimony regarding seeing powder on his nose led to the warrant being written or, uh, or if it was reasonable to believe that if this paragraph in this paragraph was just completely omitted, that there would be no search warrant, then the warrant must be thrown out. All evidence of that must be thrown out. And Nick basically wins by default because then they don't have cocaine. They don't have bullet casings. They don't have guns. Um, they don't have the hair follicle test. They have nothing. Um, but as you can read in the above paragraph, M. Holt, he hears M. Holt talking about a video blog, which references Nick having powder on his nose. And he no- states explicitly that the day before had been taken off of the internet. So that same word choice, taken off and taken off, exists in both paragraphs. And this one's explicit. When he says taken off, he means that he removed it. And then he watched a video that had been taken off and playing that was an archive. So it doesn't matter. If this is significantly digitally altered, um, it would only be, it would only matter if it was obviously comically fake, but it's not. It's so subtle that even if it was fake, it would not be unreasonable to assume that he didn't know that. So the, what I'm trying to say is that his main point of contention, this Frank's hearing, to get the warrant thrown out, does not seem to have a very good chance at succeeding. But he's trying it anyways. So his case then, um, they, the state has to follow a written response, and then Nick gets an opportunity to reply. By September 6th, both of these responses are expected to be in, and then they will schedule the Franks hearing, and then the judge will determine if this search warrant is valid or not. And then uh, they move from there. Kayla, as I mentioned prior, had uh, asked for a continuance because she retained counsel at the last second. So her counsel hasn't had an opportunity to familiarize herself with the case at all. Uh, Her omnibus hearing will be on October 28th. Nick's continued omnibus hearing has not been set yet. There's a chance that they will be set on the same date, um, but there's a chance that it might not be, and they will not synchronize again until the trial date. Um, So we're probably going to have more people go, or the same people or different people go to the Frank's hearing and then later to the Rikela omnibus and people just continue to go there and take notes, which was very nice to have. Um, a lot of information was gained in regards to um, how people were behaving. Most importantly, though, oh, wait, no, this is a picture. I'll get to that part, the most important thing we learned there. Um, so this is April M. Holt and Kayla wearing tights, like yoga pants to court. Um, Nick looks appropriately dressed. That says attorney right there. Um, look how fucking short they are, especially with Nick standing up above them. It's like a foot. And then Nick or uh, Ralph did what he promised in the aftermath of the court. He got pictures of the Kiwi fags. Here are users of the forum walking off together hand in hand, basically one man ignoring keep off the grass signs. Uh, and a woman turns and waves at Ralph, and they walk away. And that was it. <laughs> Ralph got a picture of, like, five completely normal fucking people. And this picture in particular is very funny. Uh, Ralph snaps a picture of a black guy <laughs> smiling at him knowingly. And then Ralph publishes this to the internet as an epic Owen. Uh, there's a very funny picture where Ralph is, like, recording his own shadow. And it's just, like, this big, bulbous shape cast to the ground. And he's trying to, like, embarrass, like, five fucking randos. 
Um, Ralph then showed up to Ricada's house. So as you can see, they very quickly switched out of their stockings to what appears to be prostitute clothing. Like legit, if you see if you saw April on the fucking street, you would just assume that she was a whore that you could just buy at that moment. Um, Kayla doesn't look much better, but April in particular looks like she's fucking for sale. Um, then there is this lovely picture of Nick. The most prominent thing about him is uh, his legs. Like, there's a giant wound right there, and it makes me think, like, is this liver liver failure? These are liver spots, right? And liver spots are indicative of liver failure, right? So his alcoholism has already taken, like, a massive fucking toll on him. It looks like he's not circulating blood to his legs correctly anymore. And he's got liver spots all over his fucking body. So that's not good. Um, also, you can see the uh, Cuck Queen 3 Wolf tattoo. Um, that's supposed to be Nick right there, the big wolf, and then she's one of the two beta wolves. Um, I guess she has literally tattooed this polycule shit onto her fucking body. Um, and then Ralph is standing there just pointing as he does. He looks like, he looks like he's literally Nick's dad. <laughs> he's Nick's dad. He doesn't know. It looks like he just dropped in from the ball game or whatever. He went to court in that fucking, uh, um, baseball shirt, by the way, and jeans, and his uh, lifts, <laughs> his platform shoes. Um, so dad's over here visiting his son Nick, making sure he's doing okay. He's proud of him. He's pointing at him. He's like, "Yeah, I made you, bish. I knocked up your mother." <laughs> and then um, Rikita like like did like a fucking manic stream where for 30 minutes he just completely misrepresented his own case and called everybody who doubted him a faggot as if like he won anything <laughs> i just don't understand it i think he's just trying to convince his idiots uh, whichever whoever's left whatever he can at this point however while um i had written um concerns for the kiwi farms users going to the, the thread i should have been more um cautious because the cringe was coming from inside the thread chat first off this fucking idiot decides to just blurt this out he says any sides of the kids in or around the hearing now it has been made abundantly clear to everybody on the forum for weeks now that uh juju the cow aka dax where a man who gets fucked in the asshole dressed as a cow and Rikeda are obsessed with trying to say that this interest in this case is only to see pictures of his kids for whatever reason. So, of course, people immediately jump on this. He clarifies that what he was asking was if there's any evidence that he's in custody of the children, which is a legitimate question to ask. Unfortunately, his IQ was about 40 points too low when he wrote this post, so it got to get plucked. Then we have, uh, I'm going to use Captain Manning and beat up on him, but there are many other people. Um... So Ralph tried to argue that this woman is a tranny because that's like his only possible retaliation to the point that a woman is laughing at him and waving at him and is a foot taller than him. So Captain Manning, who's John in the Dear John segment, says, um, At the risk of being accused of simping, I'll say she looks like a very nice young lady. I particularly like the confidence she exudes while smiling and waving to the felted rage pig. I don't think it's out of line or cringe to say that at all. I think it's entirely reasonable. Um, may Lidl Drip or any other whammon respecter res smack me if I'm wrong. Um, and then everyone, like, the main issue, like, people were pointing out this. They're, she's wearing, like, business casual slacks, so they're not form-fitting. So people said that she didn't have an ass. But if she was wearing form-fitting clothes, she would look like this. Or like this. Or, no, not black. She wouldn't look like a black man. She would look like this. And it's like, it's much better to just wear slacks. But if, people, if she was wearing tights, then people would just be talking about her ass again. So the only way that she could have attended this trial and dressed herself in a way to not draw attention was to not, not go at all. Which is irritating. Because it's like, people are volunteering their fucking time to go and attend the trials and take notes for our benefit. And then you have severely handicapped autistic people who can't shut the fuck up and make themselves look ridiculous. And literally after this point... For the next 40 fucking pages, it's just people talking about her pants. <laughs> and if she's attractive or not. And it's like, who the fuck asked? So next time, during the Franks hearing or during the fucking um, 
Kayla Omnibus or whatever fucking hearing. It's like, if you fuck up my on-topic thread by derailing it with your fucking retard posting, I will just kick you out immediately. I should have been more more aggressive about it, but I'm, I'm not trying to be like a, like a dictator or whatever the fuck. I'm just trying to let people talk. But right now, especially with these threads, like you got Juju and you got Vito the Pedo and you got Arcata crawling over it, trying to find any way to deflect over the actual content of their case. Like, you fucked this up for me. Um, I have no sympathy for you. <laughs> So just just shut the fuck up. Are you talking about the case? Maybe you should think if you talk about the kids. Are you are you are you wording what you're saying in an intelligent way that can't be taken out of context to your detriment to my detriment? No. Okay, then shut the fuck up. Frustrating. <clears throat> so let's see what uh, Ralph had to say. Uh, can't spin this one. Nick Ricada is fucked. How funny was that fart on stream now, Nick? Ralph a curse strikes again. And all honestly, we killed the beef and feel bad for him, but damn. I'm oh, sorry, this is from May. Sorry, never mind. I forgot he likes Nick again. Um, he says... <laughs> he actually didn't say anything about the case. He posted his notes. His uh, handwriting is fucking atrocious. Basically illegible. Where the fuck is the thing... About him being bald. I have this set up. Where the fuck is it? Is this like a... Wait, hold up. Oh, did I lose this? No, it can't be. Someone had taken notes, and he sat right behind Ralph. And, um... I think it's on my zitter, actually. Give me a sec. No, this was the picture I was thinking of. <laughs> uh, this. Ralph is tr is taking notes, saying already is taking notes. Already has half a sheet full. Can't make anything out. His handwriting is so bad that he can't make out a single fucking thing on the page. Massive bald spot on top of his head. Skin very red. So Ralph is like like he's like pink now. He's like dyed red. Um, and his sunburn extends to his fucking bald um, spot, so he immediately chimped out about this and said this. No, no baldness here, no. No baldness here, just impotency. No, no baldness here, no. no okay, no baldness here, uh, just impotency. Okay, I got you. Um, notice, however, that his, like, he pulls his hair, it's like, proof, like, look, I got hair, it's, oh, no, he doesn't do this in this clip. He pulls his hair, though, he's like, um, look, I, I got my hair. But I don't know what the words top of the head mean. Like, you could just... Your camera is facing forward. If there's a bald spot, it's on the top. As in the top of the head. Not the front of the face. The top of it. But for some reason, they're very... Um, he didn't want to show off the top of his head, so I don't know. He's bald, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the other kind of after after-show drama was uh, that Aaron Imholt had kind of challenged him to, like, a friendly sparring thing. Like, he just wanted him to show up at this gym and box him a little bit. He didn't want to do, like, a full-blown boxing match. And uh, Ralph didn't want to do that. Like, he didn't want to, like, show up and actually box. So he um, decided to throw together all these stipulations for him showing up. He has to be... It has to be, like, a fight. It has to be mediated by, like, an independent referee... Aaron has to put up like three thousand dollars into a trust account. <laughs> like he just, he just kept putting on and on. Like, okay, look, I'll spar. I'll, of course, I'll box you. I'm not afraid, bitch. I'll be there. But just say so you understand. Just say so you know, boy. Just say so understand me. I don't do nothing for free. So this is what I need. I need $3,000 in a trust account. I need an independent referee sanctioned by the MMA Association of the United States. I'm going to need accommodations. I'm going to need you to buy a rental car for me for the week so I can drive to the establishment you want to fight in. Uh, I'm also going to need my hotel paid for, and I expect that my hotel has a bowl of brown M&Ms. I prefer the brown M&Ms because they look like the shit I eat off my thumb when I'm thumb-fucking an 18-year-old retard girl, okay? 
That's what I all need. If you don't, I mean, listen, I'm here. I'm ready. I'm saying, I'm saying to you, I'll fight you. I'll fight you right now if my conditions is met. And if you don't want to meet my conditions, I guess you're just fucking afraid, bish. Okay, I got you. Very clever, Ralph. Nobody knows what you're doing. It's so smart. Yes, you're definitely not backing out of your fucking fight that you challenged him to. I didn't even want to like. It wasn't even like a like a proper match. He just wanted to box him. It was like a friendly offer. Whatever. He always does this shit. This is like the eighth fucking time that he's like challenged somebody to like a like a combat sport event. And then I was like, well, I need what I need here is I need all this set up before I can do that. <laughs> he just backs out by like adding so many conditions that it becomes ridiculous. Meanwhile, even fucking Zoom, even Corey Barnhill, the person that watches child pornography, he challenged someone to a fight and then actually just showed up in a parking lot and got punched in the face. And Ralph can't do that. Ralph can't do it. He's too old. He's too old and short and fat and stupid to do any fucking thing besides waddle around with his camera pretending to be uh, Ramona Ralph <laughs> instead of Ethan Ralph. Um, oh, he can't do one other thing. He can dox Aaron Nimholt. So he, he randomly decided, fuck this bitch challenging me to a, a sparring contest, motherfucker. And he just posts his house and his address on, on Telegram. Which... Wait, I can't... I can't... Where did I hear this at? I'm trying to remember if I'm allowed to say this or not. Sorry, give me one second. Um, I think Aaron has said that the police are investigating Ralph for witness intimidation because he's the witness in a criminal trial and Ralph is a direct associate and friend of the defendant in that case. And he's randomly posting out where this guy lives on the internet um, while visiting specifically to, to, to watch proceedings related to the trial and to visit the defendant. Um, so that's a very smart move. By Ralph, um, just two thousand IQ moves all around the holes. It, it's so it's so like hard to understand like what the fuck Juju and and Rakeda and Ralph are ever doing, until you realize that they all have literal brain damage from alcoholism. Like there are holes in the gray matter of their brain where they make decisions at. And the, if you if you just remember and contextualize everything that they say and do through that lens, that they have a brain that is tattered like 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 old fabric it just makes everything make much much more sense it really does like the the nick Ricardo that's alive right now his brain is physically altered from what it was just a couple of years ago he's a much dumber more belligerent uh lower intelligence angrier person than he was before and uh, even Ralph, it's like Ralph has had like a visible deterioration in his personality, and he didn't have much in that department to begin with. Um, so I think that's it for the omnibus stuff. Did I miss anything? I don't think I missed anything. I think I covered everything pretty correct. Let me double check real quick. I actually have um, a Reddit segment picked out this time, and it's like a crazy fucking thing. Nick never get dude. All he fucking does. It's so crazy. Like he puts so much effort into lying these days. He just lies so much for so little, for so little purpose. It must be exhausting to lie that much. Okay. Um. Let's see what's chat doing. Oh, he never went to Jim's house either. He literally went to, he flew into Minneapolis. He went to m &S, the fucking airport blocks away. Literally, you can walk off that fucking airport and take a public bus for $3 and arrive within seconds of walking distance to, to Jim's driveway. And the fucker didn't even go. <laughs> it's like he's afraid. It's like he's afraid that if he walks into the property, um... He's going to get shot in the fucking head by, like, a rooftop Korean or something. 
<laughs> Some Asian woman's going to start barking gobbledygook at him and blow his fucking head off. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. Okay. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!